Hello and welcome to the Franz Van Cat interview. Once again, Washington is sponsoring yet another round of peace talks between the Israelis and Palestinians. One man who's going to be watching developments very closely is Palestinian politician Mohammed Dahlan, the former leader of Fatah in Gaza. In the wake of the violent Hamas takeover in 2007, he was forced to leave the coastal territory. He's been in exile ever since, but is still an influential figure in Palestinian politics. In the past, he's been closely involved with attempts to negotiate peace with the Israelis. But with Hamas running Gaza and Fatah confined to the West Bank, the eternal question is whether peace with Israel will ever be possible. Mohammed Dadlan, thank you so much for joining us. You're First welcome. of all, let me start by asking you, what do you think about this Hamas attack on Jewish settlers last night? Does it worry you that Hamas is still able to carry out such attacks in the West Bank, given it's under control of Fatah? Yeah, it doesn't need a lot of efforts to have uh, attacks in Israel or in West Bank or uh, wherever they want to do it, either Fatah or another organization. But the question is, why is now? Why Hamas is doing that now? Uh, I think the answer is to, to facilitate the concept of Netanyahu to attack Abu Mazen politically in Washington because he's, he's going uh, uh, to, to uh, allow the settlers to, build, to rebuild the, the activities, their activities and to build the new uh, settlements. Uh, and I think uh, this, that, that attack was a gift for Netanyahu to uh, uh, pressure the whole international community to believe in his uh, beliefs and his strategy, which based in destroying the hope of building two-state solution or implementing the two-state solution. Now, what do you think of President Abbas agreeing to take part in these negotiations, despite being very adamant over a number of months that the Palestinians wouldn't take part or participate while settlement construction continues? Yeah, you know, our official position, we, we, we pass it to the Quartet and to the U.S. Uh, uh, and to, the, the, to everybody, to the Arab world, that we cannot continue this negotiation while the settlement activities is taking place because settlements is really kind of tourism. There's no difference between settlements, activities, and the terror acts have taken place yesterday. It's the same because Netanyahu, in fact, he's putting facts on the ground and he's designing the final status on the ground without negotiation. This is not just only precondition, but facts on the ground. Uh, uh, this is our position. The Americans thought that we, 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 they have hope. Uh, and they wouldn't be able to convince Netanyahu to stop uh, uh, his activities and to to change the situation on the ground and to look for uh, uh, the, the, the condition that allowed both sides to go uh, free and confidence for uh, to discuss deeply the final status issues related to Jerusalem refugees and uh, that we call it territorial issue. Now I think it's it's I hope that it will not be photo opportunities in Washington, if. Washington will, con will, will co uh, conclude something real to convince Netanyahu to do uh, uh, real negotiation instead of just only bluffing the international community that he's willing to do something uh, 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 great for Palestinians. But because the Palestinians are not, are, are not there, he, he is not able to do it. Therefore, I think the big test for the, the whole international committee is 26th of this month. If Netanyahu will continue building settlements, I think there is no hope to continue this negotiation. Now, of course, September 26th, as you, as you just mentioned, is a key date, and that's the date when this uh, Israeli settlement freeze ex it ends. If the Israelis do not extend that freeze, what will the Palestinian negotiating team do? I don't think they have the uh, political legitimacy to continue, and Palestinian interests will be destroyed uh, uh, with uh, such things. Because, you, you know, we cannot negotiate while the settlement activities are building on the territories that we are negotiating on. Uh, uh, therefore, I don't think uh, there will be a chance to continue such negotiation while Netanyahu is continuing building thousands of thousands of houses in East Jerusalem and West Bank uh, the minute that we are talking about the, ter the territorial issue. There is no logic. And uh, another thing that I, want, uh, I really want to, to, to mention it here, there is no need for negotiation. We are discussing all these details related to Jerusalem, territorial issue, refugees. It needs 
political decision for Netanyahu and Abu Mazen. I think, according to my knowledge, that Abu Mazen is able to take this such decision, but not Netanyahu, his coalition, his uh, uh, way of thinking is not really able to do, and he doesn't want to do it, uh, because his, 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 his coalition is related with the settlers, not with the peace, with the peace uh, treaty with the Palestinians. He's, he wants to satisfy Bene Begin instead of satisfying the, uh, the American administration or the U EU country. President Abbas remains in power despite saying he wants to resign. His mandate has expired. How strong a leader is he? It, it doesn't need strong leader. It doesn't need uh, to go to the gym to be strong or weak. Uh, uh, the one who could strengthen Abu Mazen is finding the status fair deal with the Israelis. If there is no fair deal, there is no uh, uh, Palestinian leadership weak or strong. I think uh, Israel have destroyed Abu, Abu Ammar at that time uh, by not giving him something tangible to achieve it to our people, and they siege him, and almost they killed him by sieging him long time. And now, and they, at that time, they were talking about Abu Mazen. If he will come, we'll final, we'll make the final status in two months. Now Abu Mazen is here. Five years, they didn't give him anything. That means Israeli strategy based on no partnership with the Palestinians, no matter who's running the show there. Now, Abu Mazen is there, and Salam Fayyad is prime minister. This is the dream team to have the peace, and they are destroying them politically. Of course, Palestinian Prime Minister Salam Fayyad has a very ambitious plan to establish a Palestinian state by the end of 2011. Do you think that's feasible? No, I don't think, but he's doing his best to build a, a, a strong institution because... The minute that Israel are sieging West Bank and uh, 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 isolating Jerusalem and destroying Salam Fayyad uh, programs in Nablus and Jenin and kidnapping some people here and there, last action was against our people in Nablus. They, uh, they get in. Uh, the minute that everybody knows and admired that Salam Fayyad have done a great job in security and in economic things by the help of Abu Mazen and Fatah. But they went in and out without reason, just only to humiliate Salam Fayyad and Abu Mazen among her, their people. And this is the way that they destroy the hope from uh, my point of view. Therefore, th this question should be answered by Netanyahu. Is he going to have peace or to continue settlements and occupation and peace? It's not working. It's not fixed together. What sort of relationship do you have with President Abbas? It's excellent relationship. I'm, uh, I'm working in the Central Committee. I've been elected last year and uh, I'm helping in the, uh, in the steering committee for the negotiation. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to negotiate, negotiating T-bill anymore. I feel up from that. I got 12 years with Abu, Abu Ammar and Abu Mazen uh, and it's hard hard job. It's not easy. You will be attacked by everybody, the you're, Israelis, you're the Americans, in running, in running Palestinians. For you're not interested in running for presidency at some stage? No, I don't think. Uh, I, I saw Abu Ammar experience with the Israelis. I saw Abu Mazen. He's a peace man. He's, uh, he's, he's spending all his life uh, to make peace. Uh, I, I, I think it's a hard job and uh, I'm not really interested. I do interested to strengthen Palestinian leadership, to have peace, to get some hope for our people for the so, future. So what are your personal ambitions? No, I'm, I'm working now in the, in the whole uh, levels in the leader and president leadership, PLO, authority. I'm a member of uh, PLC members. Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm satisfied by my role now. Do you see a day where you'll ever go back to Gaza? Uh, uh, yes, of course, because I've been deported by the Israelis. I've been jailed five times by the Israelis. Then they deported me. Then I get back to them uh, as a negotiator in Taba and in Camp David. Uh, in fact, I, I wasn't been there uh, when Hamas uh, uh, taken the coup. I was in the hospital in Germany. But I think Hamas have made a strategic mistake by taking over by force because they lose, we lose, and the Palestinian people are suffering. Now, even the former head of the Israeli Mossad, Ephraim Halevi, says the Israelis should talk to Hamas. Don't you think it's time for Fatah to reconcile with Hamas? No, no, no. We are... We are begging Hamas to, for reconciliation. We, we, we have signed the uh, Egyptian document because we, without putting any demands on it. But Hamas have no interest to have reconciliation with Fatah because they want reconciliation with Israel. 
and with the Americans. And they are, and we are following the relationship, they are trying, and, but it, they, they will not get anything because we know the rules. There is rules in the international relationship. The Hamas, they thought that if they go to the mosque, they can open the White House. It's not going to, to happen this way. I think they can be part of the Palestinian political system, and we are very keen to have them in this political system. It will strengthen Hamas, the same strengthening Palestinian Authority. But there is political rules to how, how to do it. Till now, PLO, according to the law, representing Palestinian people. There is no another way unless we will go back to the election. And Hamas, they are against going back to the election because they know in advance they will lose it. Do you think, though, there will be a day where the two sides will come together? Given what you... Yeah, yeah absolutely. They, there is no another way. The, the question is when what, what, what will happen. Because now both sides are losing. Fatah and Hamas, the authority, and Israel, by the way. Even they, are, they can gain some advantage for this you know, misunderstanding between Hamas and Fatah. But strategically speaking, the only way with, within the Palestinian Authority and Palestinian people is the reconciliation and to unite the Palestinian uh, system and to and to uh, uh, to agree about a political strategy, not just only security system here and there, security arrangement. No, no, no. We have Hamas have to admire that we have political platform. Without that, we cannot reconciliate. They cannot gain anything, and they will not gain anything. The same we are. Therefore, we are calling for reconciliation, going back to the public to, uh, uh, for uh, a new election. And uh, we are really very keen to have them in unity government, but after the election. Mohammed Dahlan, thank you so much for that. That's it for this edition of the Franz Van Cat interview. Stay tuned for news headlines coming up shortly. Goodbye. <laughs>